Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a great day so far at Pleistocene Park. Before we set off on our safari, just a few safety rules to go over. Please keep your legs and arms inside the vehicle at all times. Please refrain from taking flash photography as it may scare some of the animals inside the reserve. And also, please refrain from eating as it may attract some unwanted attention. With all that said, let us begin the journey of a lifetime. The journey through Pleistocene Park. Greetings friends, I hope you're all having a marvellous day. We've got a lot to build today, lots to do. We've got the mammoth meadow to build, the trail, the safari trail going through it, and also the safari trucks that are going to take our guests on a tour of a lifetime through the Ice Age Reserve. So we've got a lot to do. Let's get to it. But before we begin, hit that like button. Hit that like button to show your support for Pleistocene Park. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. So without further ado, let's get on with this build. So you can see there we started off with a river or a little stream that is cutting its way through the Mammoth Meadow and just putting a bit of a barrier uh, between habitats. So across that river is where the Sabertooths are living, the Sabertooth cat, the Smilodon habitat. And you may be able to see over there in the distance, Pride Rock. Over there on the left-hand side where our Sabertooths uh, may get up in the morning and get a lovely view of the entire park. I imagine if they could talk to each other, they'd be saying, Everything that the light touches is ours, or something like that, I don't know. And the mammoths would probably be saying to each other, never cross the river, because across the river is where the saber-tooths live. So you definitely won't want to go over there, because over here we do have a mammoth graveyard. We've got lots of skeletons and skulls and tusks of mammoths, so they definitely don't want to be going over there. And here we're just putting in a little spring where the water is coming up um, to feed that uh, river. And over here a little watering hole as well for our mammoths. And you can see we've got two in here and these are two bulls. So the other two herds that we have in of the mammoths are actually um, all females. Um, this is how they would have lived in the wild, much like modern-day elephants. When you see a herd of uh, elephants, it's all female elephants, and the bulls tend to go around on their own. So we've got two here uh, that are quite friendly with one another. Um, so these two are pals, and they're just hanging around this watering hole. Um, and as it comes into the rut season, when it's the mating season, they probably won't be friends anymore. They'll probably turn against each other and start fighting uh, for the right to mate with the females. So we've got two males, but I do think we could do with maybe one or two more. I'm thinking of having one, um, a big male that's on his own, you know, um, doing his own thing. You know, when you see these legendary animals that are massive, 
Um, I'd like to have something like that. So what I'd have to do is I'd probably have to make um, loads of mammoths from that skin. That's the biggest skin you can get for the mammoths. But each uh, animal that you put into this game, uh, they're all different sizes and different shades. So they're all individuals. So I'd have to probably make a load of them and then find the biggest one out of them. And that can be our alpha male of the park and he can wander around you know he's not even intimidated by saber tooths and things like that um, he just wanders around the park doing his own thing he's that big he's that massive nothing can intimidate him so we'll be putting him in somewhere i'm not sure yet um, but we'll introduce him further into the park as we go so we're just putting in all the bushes and plants and a few flowers as well because this is a meadow so we want to make uh, lots of um, bushes and things like that in the other section of the park we have a grassland so lots of grasses to feed off and here if they want to get a bit of variation in their diet maybe there's something missing some sort of mineral or requirement that they need they can change up habitats they can go into the woodland or they can now come over to this uh, meadow that we have for them. So I'm just trying to put in plenty of trees and plenty of shrubs to give them a nice variety. Lovely stuff. And here you can see we're just putting the dirt track road in, um, continuing on from where we built it last time. As you can see, it's going through the saber tooth cat enclosure. Well, uh, territory should I say um, and then crossing that river hopefully they don't get stuck because if they get stuck there it's not a very good place to um, get stuck because the, the cats are right near here so um, yes they'll drive through that river and then they'll go into the meadows um, in fact they'll actually be coming the other way they're going to get on at the meadows we're going to have the entrance to the uh, safari drive through there and then they'll drive through the meadow, cross that river, get a lovely view of Pride Rock and of Stonehenge there as well. And then they can cross over the other river to the big grassland over there where most of the mammoths are living. Lovely. Oh, and by the way, I hope you enjoyed the Zoo Tycoon music there we used at the start of the video, the little intro. Um, a little throwback there to Zoo Tycoon, if any of you played it. Uh, let us know if you are a Zoo Tycoon fan. I used to love playing this game. I adored playing it um, back in the day. And when you look at the games we've got now, how much these games have improved. You know, back then, everything was squares. And when you wanted to put terrain in and stuff like that, you had to pick an individual square. I want to put snow here. Boom, press it down. And uh, all the animals would give little happy faces. Uh, they needed so much of this terrain and so much of that terrain. And sometimes you get trampled terrain. And sometimes there were too many trees and they were upset. Um, but no, Zoo Tycoon was a brilliant game. Um, this is where it all started, I think. It all started with Zoo Tycoon, Roller Coaster Tycoon. Um, you know, doing certain builds like that. And now, look at this, what we've got. We've got things like this, where you can basically build absolutely anything. You know, there's not much limitations. You know, you can enlarge the size of the rock that you want to put in. You can change the shape of it by elongating it. Um, even the trees as well, you can click on the individual tree and actually enlarge the tree. So if you want a really massive redwood tree, uh, because these trees did grow absolutely huge. Um, you can just enlarge it and they go absolutely massive. Um, and you can see here, I'm just putting in some roots for that oak tree that are piercing through the rock. Um, and that's just a dead tree. So just put it to the side, squashed it a bit and made it look like it's the roots coming out of the rocks. Um, but yeah, it really is great. The creativity you've got with this game, it's so good. And it'll be great to see it when you can actually have more behaviours from the animals. I think that's the only thing we're really missing at the moment. Uh, just some behaviours would really work a treat. Um, I'd rather have that, to be honest, than more animals put in. Um, I mean, I, I do want more animals. I want that velociraptor. But um, I think, you know, once we've got some behaviours, it really will bring the animals to life. Because at the moment, they just eat, uh, drink, 
walk, run. Um, I don't think there's much social interaction. So it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, when they do bring those behaviors in, um, what it's gonna look like. I'd love to see some mammoths fighting tusk to tusk, you know, getting their tusks into a lot like um, we see bull elephants doing today. Um, you know, and a, a lot of different variety of behaviors. I think the more the better because that's just gonna make them feel even more real. Um, and it'll be great because sometimes, you know, if there's that many, it'll catch you off guard. You'll see them doing something and go, I've not seen that behavior before. And it just makes the whole, you know, experience it makes them feel like real animals and i think it'd be really good so i can't wait for that update to come um it'll be really interesting to see um what the team have been working on because they've done a fantastic job of making these animals look so paleo paleo accurate um, i think it'll be really good to see what they actually do with the behaviors because they won't be making the behaviors look silly i don't think i think they'll be making the behaviors uh look paleo accurate as well so It'll be really cool to see what they've done. I'm really excited for it. I can't wait. Um, oh, and you can see there's a lot of dung building up there. We forgot to put the dung beetles in. Um, this time we've remembered, I've just put one in there so he can do a good job of making sure that these meadows are clean. And yeah, this is coming on now, this, uh, this section where the bull mammoths are living. You can also see they've got a friend um, we have a woolly rhino there uh, and he's just on his own he's kind of like a rogue rhino just you know chilling out with these bull elephant uh, mammoths um, and you can see is the darker uh, skin that we've chosen as well the darker fur should I say actually um, and just put that snow in there lovely oh you can see we put another herd in as well so I don't know how many mammoths we've actually got now we've got quite a lot um, we've got three herds so a lot of individuals and just smoothen all that down and now put the rest of the road in here lovely marvelous and I'll just go over it a little bit with some snow I don't want it to stand out too much uh, you know just a you know, great big dirt line. Some snow would have fallen on that, but as the trucks go over it, they're going to churn up the the mud with the snow, and it become all muddy. And yeah, um, so we've got to make it look natural. Don't want it to stick out like a sore thumb. And a few more bushes and areas where the animals have trodden a bit more. Um, and in the forest, there'll be a bit more leaves and things that fell down, twigs. Uh, so there won't be as much snow in there so it's just trying to make it look as natural as you can now we have something very exciting to look forward to have you seen the trailer for the new show coming out on netflix life on our planet if you haven't i definitely check it out it looks absolutely fantastic so the trailer starts off with a few teasing shots of some dinosaurs but then it says to understand life on this planet we must go back to the beginning and we get some shots of it looks like um, early plant forms or maybe it's cells sing singular cell organisms um, showing life actually beginning on the planet and then we get other shots of things before the dinosaurs uh, so we get a shot of a little fish crawling out onto the land so the very first fish oh dear what's happened here we've got some saber tooth that have escaped onto the roof of the cave i don't know how on earth they've managed that um but yes um hopefully they don't manage to get out of the actual enclosure to the guests and um, we wouldn't want that um but yes it looks like it's going to not just be showing dinosaurs in this show it looks like it's going to show a whole variety of different animals from different periods in time, um, right from the beginning. Um, so we get shots of these little fish crawling out onto the land. We see these amphibians. We also see um, animals from the Devonian period. I'm, I'm sure it was a Dunkleosteus that we see swimming uh, in the ocean. I think we even saw an orthocone as well. We see some kind of giant big squid. I'm sure it was an orthocone. Um, 
And then we see uh, the Arthlaplora walking past, creeping by. Um, so it looks like we're going to be going to the Carboniferous period as well. And we'll work our way up to the dinosaurs by the looks of it. And then we don't stop there, we carry on. We carry on to the age of the mammals. So we're gonna see animals from the Ice Age, the Pleistocene period. Um, so I think that's really good. It, it might be that every episode is going to be a different section in time. And so it'll start from the beginning and each episode we're just gonna keep going and going. And I think that'll be really good uh, because it's going to show the audience where life has come from and how it's evolved over time. Because some shows it will just show, you know, dinosaurs or, you know, Walking with Beasts, it'll just show mammals. Um, and we've got the show Walking with Monsters as well. But this show is going to show everything in one big timeline, it looks like. Um, which will teach um, the audience, you know, how animals have evolved over time as the earth has changed. Um, how animals have changed with it. So I think that'll be a very, very good show. And we've got Morgan Freeman, who is going to be the narrator. So, you know, you can't get much better than that, can you? You know, you've got Morgan Freeman narrating the show, so I'm sure his voice will carry um, the show very well. And we've also got Steven Spielberg um, involved as well, producing it. Now, of course, Steven Spielberg directed Jurassic Park, so I have faith that he will do a very good job at producing this show as well. Um, I'm sure his passion will ooze out with those dinosaurs, and um, I think he'll do a very good job. I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for this, I can't wait. Ah, now here, this is where we are going to build our safari entrance. So what I want to have is two large gates where we have an entrance and an exit. So the Jeeps can drive through one to get in and one to get out. And these towers are going to have rangers in who are going to be keeping a lookout to make sure it's safe to open the gate. The last thing we want is to open the gate and a Smilodon runs out and is running riot through the park. And we'll just put the, uh, the dirt track road uh, going through here. I was going to have it going on the other side, but actually I thought, you know what, it suits better going over there to that watering hole. Um, they'll probably be able to see a lot more wildlife going that way rather than the other way, because uh, most animals will hang around water. So over here, we're just going to have some signs with some safety rules on them letting the guests know that they can't bring any food with them on their journey as it might attract um, you know the smell of the food may attract some predators over to them or you may have a mammoth uh, getting its trunk you know into the safari jeep trying to grab the food off the guests so no food is allowed on this tour i'm afraid uh, so you better make sure that you have had uh, a good meal before you set off because uh, if you get hungry, um, you will not be able to eat. Um, also, we'll have signs saying uh, no flash photography. They're going to be told this anyway by the ranger that's in the car with them. Uh, they will tell them all this, but just the signs will just be there just to remind them as well. Uh, and some fire for a bit of dramatic emphasis. You're about to go on this incredible safari you know we need a bit of a, a dramatic entrance to get the guests hyped up and now we are beginning to build our safari jeep now you can see i've just started off with the wheels this took a very very long time it may be a small thing to build but it's a very complex thing to build uh, very detailed You've got to make it detailed so it looks uh, real. If you don't put much detail in it, it won't look right. So you've got to make sure you're putting all the things in the right places. So we're starting off, we've got the wheels there. And now we've got the platform for the trailer where everyone's going to be able to sit on the benches. We're putting the railings on and then some walls here just so um, a guest might not be tempted to put their hand down low or save too more lightly to grab your hand um, if you've got uh, you know low railings at the bottom. So I think, I mean, they're not allowed to put their arms out the vehicle anyway. 
they shouldn't be. I'm sure some people will and they'll get shouted at by the safari driver, but this should put them off from getting down low and uh, it'd be easier for them to do as well if they're behind those seats. They might try and, you know, put their phone down low and try and get a video of the saber tooth and then it could lunge up and attack them. So this is, makes it a bit more safe. One thing you've got to do when you're making um, something like this is you've got to make sure that you're always clicking on the actual object that you've already built. You've got to make sure that you're on the group because if you start putting things on there, adding them on, and it's not part of the group, uh, say you want to have multiple vehicles in your park and then you copy it, you'll only copy what's in the group. So you might build half of the vehicle and then half of it's not part of the group and then you copy it and you only copy half of the vehicle so you must always make sure you can see there at the top of the screen it says exit group if that's on that means that you're still on the group now i did a few times forget to click on the vehicle so say i'm going to say i've come off now i've exited the group and i save and i come back on later and i just click an object and add it to it i have to click on the object already the actual vehicle and then it will assign me to the group and then I can start adding um, things to it then so you can see now we're putting on the beams on the top here which is going to provide a bit of shade a bit of cover for our guests um, and also a bit of protection you can see they're quite narrow so if the mammoth tries to get its whole head inside the vehicle it won't be able to its tusks will stop it so it's a bit of protection and um, now we're just going to put the canvas on top to give that cover and give that look of that classic safari jeep um, i was looking at safari jeeps to give me an idea uh, what it would look like so i looked at lots of different designs i've not just gone for one i've just gone for the bits that i like um, and tried to add those to this so we've got the easy bit done here, which is the, the actual trailer at the back. The hardest part is building the actual Jeep uh, because we, you all know what a car looks like. So you can't just, it's not like nature, you can't just put trees in wherever you want to go. Oh yes, that'll look um, nice. It's got to be accurate, it's got to look. Uh, if something's off, you'll be able to notice, but um, I'm quite happy with the way it looks in the end. And here we're just going to put this uh, grid stretcher to make it look like uh, the grill at the front. And also we're going to put this bumper on. Now this is in case anything charges at the vehicle. Oh, and of course the lights, because we probably will have uh, evening or nighttime safaris. So yeah, that bumper is just going to be like a shock absorber in case anything does attack the vehicle. Uh, if a mammoth charges or a woolly rhino. Um, the vehicle will be able to take, well, hopefully, it'll be able to take the impact of the um, of that charge. I think we'll have a driver and a tour guide. Um, so the driver can focus on driving and uh, the and you've got two, pa two pairs of eyes then, just in case there's something going on, you know. He, one could be paying attention on the road, the other could be paying attention on possible threats of animals coming too close or guests uh, that have snuck food on or taking photos with flash on you can tell them off and if anything did kick off if someone was to uh, start trying to throw food out to attract animals over and something got out of hand they would just have to get on one of their radios and call in for some backup and say uh, we need assistance please come and uh, help us out here um, but yeah I think this is coming on rather well now it did take quite a few attempts I'm not gonna lie it, took quite a, a long time to make this um, the first few attempts it just didn't look right there was something off about it I couldn't put my finger on it but there was something a bit off and the more and more I just kept trying to play about with it it started to come together um, so there is the um, windscreen done and the side windows so they're starting to look rather nice doors lovely and we'll just um, I'm just checking there that everything was definitely copied 
um, and then we'll put this other railing in here at the front and here we're just going to have some um, I'm imagining these are like horns or something uh, if something was to attack if we had some really big um, horns on the side of the vehicle these could make a really loud noise uh, to really you know amplify that sound of the horn and hopefully the noise alone will scare the animals um, so yeah these horns I'm also putting these here on the side I saw this on one of the safari jeeps that I was looking at and I thought oh that looks quite cool um, I'm imagining these could make a noise as well to really you know scare any animals that come too close or, or well maybe not too close because we don't we do want them to come close but if they start behaving aggressively or they show any threatening behavior to attack us definitely have to blow that horn and here's some more bumpers just to um, provide some you know protection for the guests hopefully they would be enough if you've seen videos of elephants and rhinos uh, attacking safari jeeps you can see the damage that they are capable of doing they can just topple over a vehicle like it's a toy um, so hopefully those bumpers will take some of the brunt force and um, you can see that I'm just putting an antenna on uh, so they can have a radio playing well maybe not a radio playing but they can uh, get in touch with um, base camp and some wing mirrors as well um, so they can get a, a view behind the vehicle they don't want to reverse into something and here we're just putting on this pipe just to look like it's uh, attached to that uh, wing mirror so it's just trying to root through all these different um, objects and different um, little things they've got in the uh, objects here you can see them down on the panel and just trying to pick ones out and think what will that look good for what can I make that shape look like and squash it and change it and make it look like the actual thing you want um, so it's not actually there you can't just go on and click the thing you want you've got to really look there are with some things um, but as the game develops I'm sure we'll get more and more objects to just be able to choose from they'll probably have vehicles I'm sure they do have uh, vehicles um, designed in their concept art so hopefully um, we actually can have our own safari on this game very soon I really do hope we can have that and now we're just putting on the entrance to the vehicle where the guests can climb up this um, ladder so we're just putting in the handrails there and the steps so this is where they can climb aboard to their safari jeep and we'll just make that look nice and secure you know as if it's welded onto these other bars make it look safe and just tidy up all the edges now lovely it is coming on it's looking rather nice and now it's time to put doors and the windows uh, on those safari towers where the rangers will be sat inside um, just monitoring making sure that everything is safe before they open the doors and i'm not going to build the inside i'm just going to put these windows um, stretched out on there on each each one lovely so I imagine they take it in shift so they don't get bored um, they'll take it in turns some will be opening the gates some will be monitoring with binoculars on the top floor checking that there's no animals um, too close and then after working uh, for so long on that shift they'll then swap over and then then it will be their turn to get inside the um, vehicle and take the guests on a tour and they'll probably do so many tours and then they'll swap round maybe they'll go out and start checking up on the animals if there's any sick individuals that need to be um, looked after or just um, you know monitoring the park seeing how the animals are getting on and um, doing some observations for scientific studies uh, see if everything is working well you know are the animals settling in okay um, any problems that may be occurring in the park and here this is going to be the ranger station this is where they're going to you know this is where all the rangers will um i imagine they'll have a staff room in here 
we've put that uh, top bit up there like it's a bit of a tower so this is where the you know the rangers hang out and uh, they'll probably keep their weapons here and um, also where they can park their vehicles next to it to um, if, if a vehicle breaks down it needs repair they'll probably have tools in here and stuff maybe darting uh, guns and darts to if they need to put an animal to sleep if it's uh, attacking a vehicle and yeah this is where you know they'll all come to have meetings about certain things that are happening in the park they'll probably do training in here as well because we'd have to make sure that they're trained very regularly um, for what to do if there is an emergency if something happens um, I imagine they do different scenarios some may maybe some days when the park is um, you know maybe early in the morning before the guests are up and going out on the safaris they could do uh, practices to see how quick their response time is if there was an emergency if a, if a jeep did get attacked how quick can they respond and uh, you know get out there and save <laughs> the vehicle that's been attacked and just put a bit of a balcony here just put some support beams in to make it look like it's uh, you know support it looks a bit daft if it's just a shelf coming off like that so yeah there's the ranger station for you um, and I quite like that we need something like that you, you've got that in um, Jurassic World you know where the jeeps and the helicopter uh, is you probably do need a helicopter actually um, if something were to happen you know, a helicopter might be one of the best things we could do to, to rescue them. You know, send down a rope to them and, and get them out. Um, and on the other side there, I've got another building where we can put more um, tools and, and uh, supplies that they may need. Lovely. And here we're just going to put some trees in and some rocks just for the backdrop there. And that will stop the animals from getting... Um, to the size which is kind of like a natural barrier here instead of putting fences in you know they won't be able to climb up this huge cliff so we've just got to put those trees in to make it all look natural oh and we forgot to put in brake lights very important if uh, the driver in front doesn't see those brake lights they may uh, go into the back of them and crash into each other so we don't want that so we definitely need some brake lights now I wasn't happy with the normal fence I didn't think it looked like a very good um, fence so instead I'm going for this type of fence these are the kind of fences you may see at um, elephant enclosures at zoos uh, these big chunky um, bars on the uh, on the gates and on the fences so we're just putting them in and um, what I want to do is make them look like they can slide open past each other um, so we're just putting in um, those walls first just to make that was like a bit of a template just so I knew where to put everything so I got everything straight um, sometimes when you're on this and you're trying to make something straight and you don't have anything as a guide it's quite hard you can actually uh, make it look straight from one angle and then you look on the other side you can see like this now with these um, you think they're all straight and then you look and some of them are sticking out and it's not quite right so um, yeah I'm just trying to put these in now make them look like they fit um, and they're too like um, things where the motors would be to slide the door open on each side so yeah that's looking very good very happy with those and we won't just have two gates here we'll also have two gates to even get into this compound because if for some reason god forbid an animal did actually walk through this gate maybe something was hiding in the bushes and as it opened they run in we want to make sure that on this side here there are two other gates so if something does get in here it doesn't actually escape and get into the entire park it'll only be in this compound but I, I imagine it'd be very rare for something like that to happen but you never know so we're taking extreme precautions you can't be too uh, careful with animals as dangerous as these
And there we have it, we are pretty much done. We're just gonna put in a nice welcome sign to make the guests feel nice and welcomed as they are uh, about to embark on their journey. I did want to build an area where the guests can queue up to get onto the vehicles, but unfortunately, we've ran out of time. Uh, the vehicle took too long to make, so we'll have to make that in the next video. But I'm pretty happy with this. Let me know your thoughts down below. Leave a comment of what you think, if you've got any more ideas for us, uh, let us know down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, guys, please do give us a like and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss what happens in Pleistocene Park next. So thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.